What is it about serial killers we find so fascinating? Have you ever been drawn to something so dark you'd be tempted to hide or at least clear your Google search history? Well, you're definitely not alone. All you need to do is look to pop culture, binge-worthy series, and an upcoming movie on Ted Bundy are making headlines. But why are we compelled to watch this kind of stuff in the first place? Our next guest is here to shed some light on the darker side of humanity, Dr. Julia Shaw. Welcome back to Your Morning. Good morning. So a couple of weeks ago, we had the daughter of the BTK killer on the show. She was uh, she had a, a new book out, and of course, we're talking about these documentaries about Ted Bundy. There's a, dr a dramatic retelling of his story as well. Generally speaking, why are we so fascinated by these guys? Um, I think the biggest reason is that uh, we we like to separate us and them, and mm -hmm. us being the good the good humans of the world, and them being the evil people. And I think looking at serial killers, it's like the ultimate example of a bad person. Yeah. And I think that we need to be really careful actually with that differentiation because it's actually, de it can be dehumanizing and we need to be careful that we're not creating artificial boundaries mm. because I think we're all capable of much more than I think we let on. So you say, quote, we make evil when we label something. So evil exists as a word, as a subjective concept, but I firmly believe there is no person, no group, no behavior, no thing that is objectively evil. So you write an entire book about evil and you don't necessarily believe in it? <laughs> uh, it is funny that the label is on the title, given that it's effectively a manifesto against evil. Um, so I mean, that I think what's more interesting than using this label to attach to others, uh, because I think it is subjective. I think that we are, we all have our different notions as to what evil means and who we would label or what behavior we would label evil. But what's much more interesting is to pick up the mirror and go, what do I have inside myself that might lead me to do small things like be passive aggressive or or be cute aggressive sort of why do you want to squeeze animals <laughs> or maybe I mean a lot of us for example have murder fantasies but don't act on them I mean what does it tell us about ourselves when we go and look for what evil actually is uh, you want people to find their evil empathy yeah what's that all about I want us to try and meaningfully deconstruct this term. Yeah. And instead of it being the end of a conversation or a discussion, when someone brings out the E word and says, you know, this person is evil, they're trying to shut down the conversation. Well, I felt that when I was in university. I was a history major, and, and a lot of that revolved, you know, I started World War II history, and a lot of people would shut down the conversation. When you talk about the Nazis and the evils, that, and the, the, the horrors that they perpetrated, oh, they were evil. And that sort of does end the conversation. Yeah. It's a much more interesting conversation if you recognize that these were regular people walking around the world and something, they, they took one path versus another. Exactly. And I think it's also just much more interesting and it's much more important to have that conversation. So I think trying to break it down, trying to figure out um, how we can understand people uh, is always a good thing. And I think especially right now, I think people are, we're living in turbulent times and I think a lot of people are afraid and we're worried about things like everything from, you know, why are there trolls online to why are there neo-Nazis to all kinds of other things. And I think this book tries to really explore those concepts in a meaningful way and deconstruct this concept in a way that applies to us all. Okay, Dallas, very quickly, this cute aggression thing. You have an explanation as to why people want to uh, squeeze puppies and pinch cheeks? Yeah, so why Why do we feel this, yeah. this urge? <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's actually called dimorphous display of emotions. So this idea is that when you feel one emotion really strongly, you actually, uh, your body, so whether you're really sad or really happy or really angry or really overwhelmed by cuteness, your brain pumps up the opposite feeling to make sure that your brain doesn't overload. And so it's the same reason why we cry at weddings, why we laugh at funerals. That's why we have cute aggression and we go, oh, he's so cute. Um, but it's not something dark lurking inside <laughs> you. There are other things that might be indicative of a, a darker path that you can take. <laughs> Julia Shaw, it's a great read. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. All right, and uh, the book is called Evil, The Science Behind Humanity's Dark Side.